Okay, so uh, good morning. So, uh, so who are you and, uh, and, and what's your business? Um, I'm Evita and I'm one of the people who started the Kleding Bibliothek, so that's the clothing library in English. Um, and together with my two best friends, uh, Maud and Karin, we are, um, instead of making people buy clothes, we want to share them with all of Utrecht. Okay, cool. So it's a local initiative. It's, it's quite local, yeah, because just like a library, you have to return stuff. So you don't want to travel for hours to bring back your beautiful dress that you wore. Yeah, I can imagine mm. that. And, and how did you uh, uh, came up with the idea of the, uh, of the library? Well, the thing is, I was, um, I was studying back at that time and I was thinking, hmm, I'm seeing a lot of shops that are closed. So what seems to be the problem? Maybe the experience isn't that awesome and people don't want to go uh, shopping anymore. And then actually I found out that they do like shopping, like the act of shopping, going somewhere, um, trying out clothes, uh, having a coffee in between. But they didn't buy as much anymore. So then it just became super clear when I was sitting with my, with my friends about in Karen and talking about this, we should make a clothing library. Why does this not exist already? So that's what we did. <laughs> And how did you do it? So uh, how did you go went from the idea to the, uh, to the physical store? Um, well, the thing is, we started with making a small website, which uh, Karin is next to being a biologist uh, who Kix is very good at. Um, and then basically reporters started calling us from all kind of magazines and newspapers and stuff. And um, then the idea got so much, um, how do you say that, press, attention that we that it just became very clear that we wanted to do this and we just spent all of our waking time doing this and then mm. we had a, a cleaning week. <laughs> <laughs> okay really cool and 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 uh, how did you find the location and, and and also how did you convince other stakeholders to join forces mm. um, well the location was something I really I literally called every real estate agent in the whole of Utrecht and I stalked them to death. And then somehow people got hold of, because of all the interviews and everything, I was just always shouting that we really desperately need a location. And then people just start hinting, hinting stuff to you. And so I got this newsletter from an initiative called Druk, um, which is basically some people that found a huge, awesome space that used to be um, a printer. And, uh, and then we were invited and it was just basically right away very good so that's that's how we got to location and yeah and yeah and the other stakeholders i think it was an idea that the time was just right for it last year like it just had to happen and everyone just thought oh my god this makes so much sense why isn't it here already and and all the positive energy we felt at that point and we were so enthusiastic we didn't really have like an approach or a strategy we were just in love with the idea and everyone could feel it okay and 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 how did you uh, came <coughs> with the uh, uh, the clothing um we started i <laughs> i very uh, cheekily mailed the director from uh, humana which is now symphony uh, and they collect old clothes and they um, give it a new purpose and they do that by selling it, by um, recycling and everything. Um, but I just said like, hey, we want to start a clothing library, would you be interested in talking? And he called me back like within 15 minutes and was like, oh my god, let's do this and um, just uh, take uh, 300 kilos of clothes, which are a lot, I can tell you, in a, in a car in a student's house. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's how we came by the clothing and, they, and we still uh, have contact with them every now and then. And people can donate clothes as well. Okay, and, and, and what is now your revenue model? Um, well, it is um, just like a library. So you subscribe to us, then you get a membership card and then uh, you pay either a monthly fee or you can have a stripper card, which is like um, how do you call that? Prepaid, basically a prepaid model for a certain amount of clothes that you can rent and you can take a whole year wearing them. So if you want to 
have a nice uh, gown at uh, Christmas and one at New Year's Eve and one on your birthday and I don't know, then you can uh, have a, a prepaid card instead of always having to come back every month. And, and uh, you're also working together with uh, designers. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you, uh, so you have uh, a, a normal clothes and also designer clothes. Yeah. So, uh, um, and um, how, did, how did you find the, the, the right designers uh, uh, that also wanted to, uh, to uh, yeah, work together with you? Well, it's basically the same idea. We just really communicated our idea in every way and said to everyone, hey, we're looking for designers and people just came to us, they just started writing us and um, basically that's how we got them and we also like I went to the art school here in Utrecht which has a fashion faculty as well so we put up some posters there and through our network we looked for some people but we even have uh, a woman who read an interview who lives in Belgium and was just so enthusiastic she drove two and a half hours to get to our student house to pick up some clothes and make new clothes from it. <laughs> so, that's really yeah. cool. so, so, so you really see that really the, the, the energy mm. of your idea uh, yeah. and, and also by, by, by sharing your idea and also your demands uh, 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 and, and your mm -hmm. needs that makes re really things, uh, things happen. But sure. then the next step, because uh, I was also uh, on your website before the mm -hmm. interview and I, and I also saw, saw two vacancies, one for an internship and one for an entrepreneur. Uh, so. Uh, what are your plans now? Well, our plans at the moment are like the three of us, Karin, Maud and I. We are going to um, still be involved with the, with the foundation of the Kleding Bibliothek. And what we would like to do and what we see that we're good at is like spreading the word, basically. Like why would you have to buy everything if you can also share it? So that's what we're going to be doing. And we found out that as good as we were with um, starting something, that actually running a shop, which it is, even though we don't sell stuff, might not be exactly what we can do and want to do at this point of our life. So we are um, actually, we're having a lot of conversations with different people at the moment. And um, we just, we took it to this level and I think it takes a different uh, skill set and energy to start something, which is why you see so much startups that don't actually grow, um, than, uh, than to run something. And actually our passions, because I'm uh, actually into art and into management, Maud is a sociologist and uh, Karen is a biologist. So we're actually all not um, we don't have a fashion background and we can see that we really need someone now who wants to be there, wants to be there for our customers, for our members, for uh, and for the clothes, basically. So, mm. you, so, you, so you need so somebody with lots of diff different qualities, yeah. uh, so somebody th that can run the business, yeah. uh, that, that can run the community, but also someone that is going to build out the entrepreneurial models that you're also going True. to make profit or not uh, make loss. True, yeah, that's the thing. I think that's because we, we were doing this out of idealism. We still are, and that's what we get really excited from. But I, uh, I can also see that it's holding us back in some ways as well. Because we are the hippies who want to change the world, but you're still in a system that you are in. So you have to work with that. And in order to uh, be able to be a success story basically to have loads of members you have to find some way to monetize as well if if no you can't um, you can't spend too much time and energy on something if you also have to make a living and uh, what do you think because because in the end uh, um, I, I'm talking to quite some uh, collaborative economy entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and I really see two different kind of entrepreneurs the the, 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 the happies <laughs> who really have their ideals <laughs> yep, and want to make it happen, <laughs> <coughs> and and the business people who just want to make money. Yeah. Uh, and I'm really interesting in, in when they are joining forces because I really believe that's also the future because uh, both both parties are not having yeah. a sustainable model. Yeah. 
because you have lots of energy, but in the end, uh, it's not sustainable because uh, 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 it doesn't last. Yeah. And the other side, the money people, they are not sustainable because they're only uh, uh, in there for the short term. So at, at, at what way are you going to join or, or, or uh, combine these two worlds? I think there are some examples from people who already can and do. I have to think about, <laughs> about one though. But yeah, I think it's a matter of also cooperating with people that are not necessarily your friends, maybe. Because what I found in our search for an entrepreneur is that you tend to go for people who are like you, but that's not what you need. So you have to make a really clear choice about who who is needed and what kind of skill sets are needed in the future um, for, uh, for our company, basically. So I think you can, you can also learn a lot, obviously. So if you know that you're an idealist and you know that you are more into the idea than into the practicality of it, you can also, if you know that, and we are with three, so we know, we can also just say to each other all of the time, like, hey, what about this? Um, or for us, we have a really good board with people, with like someone who is uh, into law, someone who is into finance, because we know that's not what we are good at, and they are. So I really do believe it's possible if you use the power of the people around you and just don't think you can do everything because no one can. So know what you're good at and know what you're not good at. And I think that's why we are saying, because we're not stepping down, we're not uh, actively go moving away from the claim we would take, but we found out we are not the type of people who should be running uh, like a physical shop. We should be the people who connect all these claim we would take because they are starting like people are starting all over Holland and Belgium. There's even some in Spain and I think in Rio de Janeiro. And um, there should be people that are so enthusiastic for the idea who can explain again and again what it is about. And also with a so sociologist, we can actually do some research on this and take it to the next level. And that's where we should be. And that's why someone else we would love to have someone else to take the claim we would take in Utrecht also to the next level. Someone who knows about like hospitality, about membership, about building a community and having beautiful clothes. Okay, cool. So what's what so what you're also looking now is okay, how can we bring it to the next mm -hmm. level? Yeah. Uh, and then also with these experiences and also these research results help other people to start their own cleaning yeah, that's it. Yeah, connecting them and also finding out where are the needs and what what is making people from not sharing but buying because there are we just started this. It's one year ago in in March. We started in with the idea in March and we opened in uh, December and in Amsterdam also opened in, uh, in December. So it has not even been a year. So obviously the business model is not perfect yet and people are still quite scared like, oh my god, how do you wash the clothes? Isn't that gross? And um, um, fashion brands are still like a little bit skitterish like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm if I want people to rent my clothes, because maybe they won't buy them. But what if that's not a problem anymore? And that's what we were, would like to uh, investigate and make people enthusiastic about. Yeah, cool. And, and you also not just mentioned a, a, a location in Amsterdam. Yep. Uh, are you also uh, in control of that? Or are there other people who just were inspired by the, uh, by the library in, in Utrecht? Um, no, those are four different girls. And actually, the funny thing is, we put our website online in March and they wrote us right away like, oh my God, we've had this idea for two years already, but we were too scared to do it. Let's talk. And then, uh, yeah, we kind of did our own thing. And they have a, like, a little bit more commercial approach to it. They're called Lena. And we see them every now and then and we talk a lot about how things are going. We are experiencing the same uh, problems and also the 
really cool media attention, obviously. Um, and we start, and we both opened in December. So that's not it's not mm, our business. It's not like our company. It's not one company, but we are quite in touch with each other. Like we talk a lot. We see each other. Like the more clothing libraries, the better. You know. Yeah, yeah, I kind of make it. And and talking about the media attention because. You 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 had really much media attention uh, when you spread the mm -hmm. idea, but then there but but then there was no physical place for people to, to yeah. go. How did you manage to 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 then a couple of months later when the location was there uh, to get a new media attention or to get attention of people to come to your shop? Because I I heard quite some stories of of, of startups uh, with a great idea, but the media, but uh, then the media attention is too early for the business. Yeah. I think for you it, it really was for added value also to make it happen to realize it. So that was a great value of you. But at what way did you get the attention when the store was open and when you needed your first uh, customers? Well, we uh, we did loads and loads of events, and we really have to thank Maud for this because she has like this energy that is crazy. She can just go without sleeping for a month or something. I don't know how she does it, but. <laughs> Um, so we sought out a lot of collaborations, I guess, with a lot of different events and every time we're at an event and a name grows and there's media, uh, that happens. And we were, we are also kind of a likable story, like we're the young entrepreneurs, we're the social entrepreneurs, it's about clothes, we're three girls, we, like, it's a very, like, uh, for media it's a nice subject because it's such a feel-good thing and I think because of the all of the media we really rushed to open like we were really pushed to do it very very quickly so I think that's how we actually retained this attention because we didn't say okay we're not ready red yet you won't hear from us for a while and we're gonna open then no 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 we were like okay let's get this shit done we're not going to sleep for months <laughs> and we're just going to open this thing so it basically never stopped like from the idea like we got so many calls and so many emails and w and people were really like pulling us through kind of like me yeah so we we kind of rushed to open I, and i think that is what got us the attention as well and and actually like being too uh, clothing libraries starting at the same time in Holland that kind of made it a, a movement like one was like okay these three crazy girls are doing something weird two in the two major cities of Holland hey this is a thing what is happening here so that's that's really and a lot of luck <laughs> <laughs> that's always really important the last one yeah. and looking back at, at, at to the last month what are your most valuable lessons learned you already shared okay uh, 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 don't uh, go for 34 partners who, who, who are exactly the same as you mm -hmm. are. Uh, but I think you have made uh, quite some mistakes uh, where, you, where you learned from. Yeah, obviously. Um, I think the most important thing is, and this is going to be a major, major cliche, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> is that you have to stay true to yourself because there are so many people who want you to do things, want you to be at an event, want you to do this interview, do this, do that, be there and respond in a certain way um, that can make you forget what you were actually what you were actually setting out to do. And I think that's the most important thing. I mean, at least for the for the hippie kind of entrepreneurs, like this feeling and this idea that we have, that's the most important thing. But sometimes everyone wants to help and everyone wants to say something and has new ideas. And sometimes you kind of get lost in what everyone else is saying and doing and you don't know what you want anymore. And I think that's the most important thing in running a business don't get confused with what other people are saying just go for your gut feeling and you have to obviously ha have the figures right and have like your mind in the right place as well but I think it has a lot to do with your gut feeling like just 
in the end it's just about the amount of risk that you want to take and dare to take and then do it <laughs> okay sounds good so i wish you good luck with uh, doing it and also <laughs> uh, with finding uh, the right partners for for growing your yeah y y your initiative okay. and uh, thanks for the okay, interview thank you very much <laughs>